Hello everybody, welcome to the shop and to part two of crosshead babbit pouring. Now you see I've got the crosshead slide all dammed up. I only did one side, right now I'm just going to do one side at a time. And I just very liberally applied putty. Now you see I put a little hole there. On the bottom side there's also this machined groove, but unlike the top side the groove is deeper than this main surface. So I wanted uh, to make sure there would be no air bubbles or anything so I I made a little air vent there. I just put a drill bit in there and then packed the putty around it. By the way, this is what I'm using for damming. I wanted to buy Babbit Right, but that has asbestos in it and it is no longer for sale. I also used this inspection mirror to take a look under here and take a look at how well the damming came out on the underside because keep in mind see that that foot there there's a little gap and the babbit will pour out of there so I damned that very liberally you can uh, reuse this stuff so there's really nothing wrong with using too much certain types of damming you can reuse certain types you can throw away uh, babbit right you can use over and over this stuff I imagine I could use it several times before it maybe dries out too much. Uh, there's some other damming materials. Some people like to use uh, red clay, like natural West Virginia red clay. I would just throw that out because it would probably dry out a little bit. Some people have used a mixture of flour and water. And that, of course, you just throw that away. Now the other thing, where the damming is touching the sooted surface, I had to wipe the soot away on the surface where this was touching because it just didn't seem to stick very well, so I cleaned it just with a rag and stuffed it down there, and it seemed to work pretty well. Here's my melting setup. I have my propane-fired blacksmithing forge that I set up on end. A ladle. I bought this brand new from McMaster Car for 25 bucks. It's a nice big 6-inch diameter ladle, and it was actually cheaper than buying an old uh, rusty, crusty one on eBay or something like that. So this will serve me for quite some time. I modified the ladle with a T-handle on the end and also a slidable wooden handle. So I can slide it out of the way to heat it up and then when I'm ready to pour I can slide this right up here so I could choke up on it, get a good sturdy grip, but not burn my hand. Also I made this little burner ring, just a piece of 5 inch exhaust tubing and just set it on top of my forge there so the flames can go around and escape and heat up the whole bowl. Here's the babbit that I'm going to use. I purchased this, oh, uh, what was it, rotometals.com, I think. I'll uh, put a link down below. They have several different grades. This, uh, their grade 8 babbit, also called Royal Babbit, seems to have the closest chemical composition to something called magnolia metal, which is a babbit material, and magnolia metal seems to be a really popular, high-quality babbit. So, I purchased this stuff. But in, in reality, I don't think this engine really cares what kind of babbit goes in it, especially with the amount of use and the amount of load that it is going to see. So I got the babbit melting. I just uh, broke off a chunk by just cutting it with my torch. I didn't obviously use the oxygen lever, I just heated it and melted through a section. Now I have the flame on fairly low. This is a very low melting point material. I believe seven or 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's slowly melting. Also a side note, if you overheat this, you could potentially mess up the composition and also you'll vaporize lead and inhale lead, which isn't too bad with the window or with the doors open, but still, it's a consideration, but if you keep it at just the right temperature, you're not going to vaporize anything and you'll be safe. Also readily at hand, I have a piece of stainless sheet metal for scraping off the slag, and also some pine sticks for stirring, and this is my temperature gauge. When the pine stick just starts to char and turn a caramel sort of color, that means the babbit is the right temperature. The crosshead and slide also have to be preheated. I did some research and got some varying answers on what temperature is ideal. I've heard any, anywhere from 200 degrees to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And since I'm not too good at estimating 
hot temperatures like that with my hand, I bought a temple stick. And you can get them in all different temperatures. This is 375 degrees. So when the Babbitt is on its way to being ready, I will preheat this with my torch. Now, like I've mentioned before, this is all degreased and cleaned, so I don't have to worry about any grease burning off, making smoke. This should be fairly clean. Of course, I'm not going to direct the torch at the damming. I'm just going to direct it on this, on here, and on the slide. I think that's a little too hot. Done. I'm wearing a mask, by the way. Safety first. Oh, the one thing I really don't like is that that sunk a lot in there. I don't think the Babbitt was too hot, but nothing poured out. See that how it's dipped in there? I really don't like that. See my little vent worked there? I guess I'll, I should have poured that one all the way up to the top of the hole. I'll do that for the other side. I think this will be okay. I hope it's okay. God, I don't want to do this again. Well, the Babbitt was definitely a lower temperature on this one. I actually just turned the, the uh, heat off on it for a couple minutes while I preheated this and let the Babbitt cool down even more. But it's still sunk in the middle. So I don't know what to think about that. Uh, the one unfortunate thing is that I'm not going to know if I did this right or not after I do all four bearings. And then I can take it apart. Sort of wants the map. Maybe we're at 350 with that one. I don't know what the to temperature tolerance is for those things. I don't know if it says. Got your safety squints engaged? Mm -hmm. I'm not driving down the bridge port to burn in it. I'm out. Moment of truth. Oh, fuck! What happened? Is it going to save it? I mean, I kept pouring and it sort of... Stopped uh, itself? Uh, it may be good, may not be. Oh, dude. Look down in there. It's everywhere. Oh, yeah, I see that. Oh, I know. I saw it! I saw it happening! It was uh, it may, may still be salvageable. You're only gonna know until we when we take it apart. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here is the wreckage. And let me show you the good side and bad side, quite literally. Here's the cross head. Here's the bottom that I poured first, of course. This came out absolutely beautiful. I'm extremely happy with it. Oh, oh, that's still hot. Came out great. You can see I'm going to have to chip off the babbit on this uh, shoe over here on the side. 
because it just leaked down until it hit the damming that was on the bottom here. And the original Babbitt came right to the side here, and as you can see, this didn't, but that's because, well, there's probably a little bit of an air bubble, and also with the damming material, as I shoved it in there, obviously smushed in a little bit and prevented the Babbitt from coming all the way to the edge, but that really doesn't matter. The Babbitt and the engine does not care where exactly it is, as long as it, of course, doesn't interfere with anything. Now here's the not too good, but I think still serviceable side. Both sides did not pour very well. The damming failed on both sides. However, I think enough material remained that it'll, it'll work. This side, of course, there isn't going to be very much contact. You can see this is a low point here. And I think this, this part's okay. There's a low spot here and there. But that'll be a place for oil to reside, and also the top side of the bearing is really just along for the ride. It's the bottom side that really gets the brunt of the force, unless you have your engine running backwards, which I don't plan on doing. This side, which was the second pour, came out a lot better, but still we had a failure of damming material that started right here. But even so, there's even more good contact area. So I think I'm going to run these. I hope none of my commenters and viewers disagree with me. And yeah, I know it's really not the best looking, but it's going to be a fair amount of work to melt this out and redo it all. And especially considering the fact that this bearing doesn't see a lot of load, I'm really not too worried about it. That The little bit of load that it sees, say from, you know, bump starting it, you know, when you're turning it backwards to start it, I don't think there's really going to be any negative impact. Also, I forgot to mention before I set it up, in addition to the spacers, I made some shims. This is probably, I don't know, 40 thou thick, something like that, maybe 30. Now what I can do, I can reduce the thickness of the shims to bring the upper guide rail down, and then once I move the crosshead back and forth a couple of times, I'll find the high spots and I can use a Babbitt scraper to scrape down the high spots to increase my contact area. So if I feel so inclined, I can do that. And I don't even have to choose to do it now. I can do it when the engine is fully assembled because all you have to do is remove the top slide, scrape it, and put it back together. Now, of course, there's plenty, especially in my case where it leaked out, you're going to have plenty of leftover uh, waste Babbitt. And yes, you can reuse this. You can reuse this as many times as you like, as long as it doesn't get overheated or really contaminated, which is not the case with this. So this will just get melted down, poured into a little ingot for further use later on down the road. I also do have to pour a big end rod bearing. Keep an eye out for a video pertaining to that in the near future. And that's all there is to it. And uh, yes, there is quite a bit to it. Uh, I think if this had been dammed better, if both sides had been dammed better, I think the top would be just as beautiful as the bottom. But I don't think it's bad enough to really warrant redoing it. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this informs some of you guys and gals out there and teaches you a little bit. You know, this is the first time I've ever poured Babbitt in my life, so I am by no means an expert, but I've read a fair amount on it, and I hope to show you the condensed knowledge that I've picked up over the past, you know, couple weeks of research, because it, it does take a lot of research. There's a lot of information out there, like on, mostly on Smokestack Engine Forum, but it's very spread out, so you have to do a lot of reading to find a small amount of information, but... I've shown you everything I know, and the proof is in the pudding. I don't think it came out too bad. And the next time I do this, it'll come out even better. So thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, you know, I hope you learned something. I hope this inspires you to pour some Babbitt in your engine and not be too intimidated by it. I definitely was intimidated by it, but you know what? Some roughneck probably would do a, ru a repair like this in the field, in the 1930s, in the engine house, 
with crude tools and no safety equipment and it would probably come out just fine and perfectly serviceable for another 10 or 20 years so this for this engine with the amount of use it's going to get which is none and the amount of runtime it's going to get which is very little again just fine so I'm beating a dead horse here but that's that thanks for watching everybody come on back for more I want to make sure that you know hit the like button and subscribe button all of that support my channel I appreciate it see you next time